Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and in today's video, I'm going to be introducing to you guys one of my favorite libraries out there in React. It is called the React Select Library. And if you ever find yourself in the need to build uh, some sort of uh, drop down menu in your websites, this is the place to go. In this tutorial, I will not only introduce the library for you guys, but I'll also uh, demonstrate some examples how to customize it and also how to apply it in a real life scenario. Now, if you're still installing a massive library like Batur UI just for one use case like this one, then I'm gonna tell you right now that that's not the way to go. Uh, in some situations, you might need some UI help, like in this one, where you might want to just build a drop down menu in your website without going through the hassle of actually building it on your own. And using a library that is well maintained and well known, like the React Select library, offers a lightweight solution for you guys. And I think it's just the best solution in this case. So if you're interested in learning how to use this library, stick around in the video, check out the code that will be all in the description. And let's get into the video. Okay, everyone. So right off the bat, I have here a project, which is just a normal React application. Um, I just opened up and created some boilerplate code with Vite, but you can use whatever you want to create your React app. And let's imagine that you are in a scenario where you have some sort of list of options like this one over here. Um, and you want to display this options as, uh, as something to be picked by the user in a drop down menu. Now, straight off the bat, if you have the options that a user might want to be able to pick, like the ones I showed in the demo, then you have to structure them like this in order for React Select to uh, read the kind of options that you want. So in this example over here, we're going to have a drop down menu with um, three options that you can choose. Uh, they are uh, ice cream flavors. So you can choose chocolate, vanilla or strawberry. So the way I need to structure this data is I need to create an array with objects inside of them for each option. And each option will have a value and a label. The value is what we're going to be using and telling um, um, React Select to represent our data, right? So it's, it's how we're going to access the value of this. Um, the label is what is going to be shown to the user when they're scrolling through the drop down menu. So we just structure our stuff like this, and then we get to work with installing the library. Okay, so I open up the terminal here and we want to install React Select. So I'm going to run yarn add react select. Now, if you're using NPM, do the same thing by using NPM install react select. Okay, perfect. Just installed it pretty quickly. Uh, like I said, it's, it's a very small library. Um, and it's really fast to install as well. Now, all I have to do to actually create a drop down menu inside of my application is to import the library over here at the top. So I'm going to import the select component from react select. Perfect. Now with this component, every time we need a drop down menu, we literally just have to call the select component like this. Now the only thing we have to do to actually get this working, although it kind of already is if you run the the website, you already kind of see a drop down menu, but it has no options as you can see, right? Because the select component by itself is already a UI component that displays this in your website. We can make multiple of them if we wanted to as well, right? And you would see multiple selects all with the same no options uh, display. So all we want to do now and all we have to do is just add the options. And it is as simple as just coming over here, um, passing a prop called options, and then passing the array that you structured, like I mentioned in the beginning, uh, as the prop to this component. Now you'll see that uh, our options appear over here. But you might be asking yourself, why does it look so ugly? Well, because in order to facilitate um, for the user to have uh, because in order to facilitate the usage to users, um, it depends a lot on uh, what the user wants. And it actually allows the user to customize their select drop down menus very simply by using their custom styles prop. Now, how do we actually uh, apply the props? Well, we want to create this object over here and call it custom styles. So I'm going to say custom styles equals to an object, which is actually going to contain two different functions inside of it. The two functions refer to the different types of styling that you can actually apply inside of your uh, drop down menu. So the first one is if you want to stall the actual input itself, 
And the second one is if you want to install any of the options that you um, select. So the way you do that is by actually defining the styles through uh, the two different functions that we're going to put over here. Well, the first one is called the control, which is for the, the inputs. And um, let me just return back uh, function. And then for the second one, we want to do the same thing, but for options or option in this case, which will be for each individual option. Now, why exactly are we returning a function, right? Because this is an object. Why, why aren't we just returning an object with the styles? Well, the reason for that is because React Select can actually apply different styling styles depending on different states of the input. So, for example, we can actually grab from this function um, information related to the state of our drop down menu to actually change the styling. And you'll see us doing that because we maybe want to change the color of the, the drop down menu if we're clicking or if we're hovering or if the uh, option is selected, right? So we would like to apply something like that. Not to mention, I kind of already like a little bit of the styling of this. For example, I want to make this uh, drop down menu a little bit longer, right? So bigger width. But I do like the styling of it. I, th I think it, the white, you know, the, the height is pretty good. I like the text inside of it as well. So we might want to like keep some of the provided styling inside of this. So I will actually grab the current state of um, the, the input over here and say that whatever the CSS is, that whatever changes we're going to apply to the CSS, we want it to keep everything that was previously there. So all of the stuff we want to change uh, CSS wise will come after this. But for, for us to keep everything else the same, we put with the structure that provided, because what these functions do is it allows you to first grab the previous state of the styles of the drop down menu, and also the current state of the, the, the input. Now we're not going to be using the state of the input for the control, but we will be using it for the options. And if this is getting a bit confusing because of the styling, don't worry, this is all about styling. Um, it's I wouldn't mind that much. Like if I were you and you're getting confused with the styling, I would probably just like um, either ask ChatGPT to do the styling for you or uh, just force yourself to to get it. But the, pro the thing here, all we're doing is we're trying to change the styles for the menu. Now we want to apply some really cool CSS to the actual input. Uh, I've already made them before, like you saw in the probably in some of the videos in the beginning of the video. Um, we basically just increased the width, changed the border radius, removed any box shadows and made the text inside of the input to align to the left. And you should see that nothing happens because we actually haven't applied um, this yet. But if we were to do that, um, we would just have to come over here and tell our input pass the styles prop and pass in the custom styles component or object. And you'll see that uh, now our thing is the size that we want. But you notice something there's where are the options? Well, the problem is we actually basically removed all styling from the options because we are returning an empty object over here. We shouldn't do that. I think if I even remove that, it will keep what it used to be. Yeah. But it just shows you that the styling you put over here that you return from this option uh, thing over here is absolute. So in the very least, we want to keep the provided uh, styling that was previously there. So you see that even if I keep the option over there, the options are still here, but it still looks ugly, right? It's all white, you barely can see anything. We're going to change that. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, I want to change the color of this uh, of the text to be equal to black, right? So we can actually see the options. Perfect. Or even gray, actually, I think gray makes more sense. Yeah, it makes a little bit more sense. But we want to keep it like this. Now, one thing I want to do is when I select an option, you see, this is what appears, but it's all blue because of the previous styling of the of the thing. So I actually want to change that I want to change the styling depending if this is of the option is selected or not. How do we do that? Well, we can have access to the state of, uh, uh, argument over here. And we can basically say that um, the background color of this is equal to white, but it's only equal to white. If it is not selected, right? So we'll say state dot is selected. 
And if it is selected, we actually want to change the color. We want to we right now it's blue, but we actually want to set it to like something like light gray. Something like that. And if it's not selected, it should be white. And you'll see that chocolate is the one selected. And because of that, it is light gray. Now we could even do something like that with um, the color as well. If we wanted, we can actually make it such that if it's selected, it's actually black. But if it's not, then it's gray. So we'll just come over here. And we'll do this. Perfect. Uh, you should see that now it kind of changes a bit, right? Now, this is probably most of the styling you want to do. It's not that big of a deal. And it's pretty simple, in my opinion. Now, what if I you see I'm selecting the options over here, but what if I want to allow multi selections? Well, it's pretty simple to do that. All you do is you just add the ultra is multi um, prop to it, it defaults to true, it defaults to false. But if you put it over here, it will be set to true. And now it allows you to select multiple options as your actual inputs. Perfect. Now, this is most of the UI of like how to set it up UI wise, but like how is it actually working functionally? How do we access the information that was selected by the user? Well, the way we actually deal with this is as if it was a normal input in, in react, right? So we would probably have to create a state that would keep track of the option chosen by the user. So we'll create a state over here called um, option picked, and then set option picked. And then we we'll set this equal to use state. Perfect. And it will be just a normal string. And then we can come over here to the select. And like I said, it's just like an input. But the difference is it's even easier. If in an input, if we wanted to keep track of the, the value that was picked by a user or chosen by a user, we would call the on change function, right? The, the on change prop. But the difference is that here, whatever uh, the, the argument of this function is already the option picked. So all we have to do is set the option picked equals to the option. There's no event dot target of value. It's way simpler like this, uh, which means that if I then want to see this option that was picked by the user somehow by having an h1 tag over here, displaying something like option picked by user. Um, we can just put option picked over here. And now if we come over here, we would basically it will basically break the thing because what option picked bring gives us is not actually the string itself. It gives us something in the format of this. It has a value and it has a label. So if we are interested in using the value for some sort of API call or something like that we could, but the label is also accessible. So if we want to display the label, we'll just say dot label. And we'll put a question mark here in case it's no. And we should see over here that when we choose something, oh, it's still multi. So let me remove that. And when I pick something, it should actually update that value. So if you have a function that you want to make an API call, this is the place to do it. Now, if you haven't noticed yet, um, one of the coolest things with this is that it's not just a picker, it's also a filter that you can write on. So if I refresh this over here, and I start writing, for example, if I start writing strawberry, it will actually filter through the options for us and display strawberry. So you know the possibilities of this, you can use this for filtering or searching a movie or searching like uh, users or something like that inside of a website. Now, one of the things that is also cool is that they allow us to allow the user to create an option if it doesn't exist yet. And what I want to show you guys is that we have these options, right? We have chocolate, we have vanilla, and we have strawberry. What if we want to allow the user to maybe create an extra option. What if we want to add the option of mango? Uh, that's clearly not one of the options. So it gives us the ability to create mango as an option. So I'm going to click that. And that's the option selected in the react select. So you can just see they have like they thought about everything. And there's more obviously to this library, I just wanted to give you guys a quick introduction to it. Um, since it's a very simple small library, there's not going to be a lot of built in features. They just have the necessary, which honestly is what I believe you will need 99% of the time. So you won't waste your your product, you won't increase your bun your project's bundle size, which is good for everyone. So this is basically it for the library. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. I might want to do some videos like this where they're kind of quick. They're about from some like shorter topics, like smaller topics that someone might just want to search on if they're interested and in looking for something like this. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the description. If you're interested in me covering other libraries, I'll most likely do that. I'm going to read all the comments and see what you guys are asking for. 
And yeah, that's that's basically it. Really hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time. Yeah.